coming up on today's episode of the AMA Drone Report. DJI demonstrates direct drone to phone remote identification. Governor Kiyomo announces the completion of a 50 mile drone corridor. And the FAA and NASA will hold a drone industry workshop. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world. In partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. I'm Sophie Herlock. DJI is demonstrating a direct drone-to-phone Wi-Fi-based solution to remotely identify airborne drones. DJI's remote identification solution, developed in collaboration with industry stakeholders and regulators, broadcasts information from drones directly to off-the-shelf mobile phones using existing Wi-Fi protocols. Using an app, anyone within radio range of the drone can receive signal and learn the location, altitude, speed, and direction of the drone, as well as the identification number for the drone and the location of the pilot. DJI demonstrated the direct drone-to-phone remote ID system at a park in Montreal, Canada during the International Civil Aviation Organization's third annual drone-enabled conference. Participants used standard phones to receive Wi-Fi-aware signals from a DJI Mavic Air drone and a DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise drone. The app and the associated drone firmware updates used for DJI's demonstration this week are not yet available for public use. In today's Drone Minute, we'll be taking a quick look at news making rounds with small UAS and hobby drone communities. On November 18th, the FAA will hold a NOTAM Data Optimization Summit to modernize aeronautical information and NOTAM data. The FAA and the aviation community will discuss ways to improve the collection and dissemination of vital aeronautical information provided primarily to airspace users with a focus on general aviation pilots and the growing drone community. Australia's Civil Aviation Safety Authority is warning drone operators to avoid flying anywhere they come into conflict with emergency services, such as natural disasters and police operations. They say flying your drone near emergencies can cause major safety risks to response teams both in the air and on the ground. And while it might be tempting to take footage, doing so could break the drone safety rules and affect rescue efforts. Drone photography conducted as a part of an international project shows the severity of ice loss from Iceland's glaciers. Teams from Scotland and Iceland have compared aerial photographs taken by manned aircraft in the 1980s, with images provided through drone operations today. The University of Dundee's Dr. Kiernan Baxter said they saw a staggering difference in a very short amount of time. SeaWorld San Diego has submitted a proposal to the California Coastal Commission for a test run of a five-minute aerial drone light show between February 4th and the 18th. The show will use 500 Intel Shooting Star quadcopter drones, and if it becomes popular, SeaWorld may make it a regular feature with more complex shows. Now back to the rest of the news. A state-supported 50-mile unmanned traffic management drone corridor, which runs from central New York to the Mohawk Valley, has been completed. With the needed infrastructure now in place, companies will be able to test both unmanned aerial system platforms and UTM technologies in real-world settings, generating data that will inform the industry and regulators and take them one step closer towards the routine commercial use of drones. The completion of the corridor advances the region's collective strategy to accelerate and support emerging uses of UAS in key industries. At the Syracuse International Airport, the governor announced the home of the Genius New York UAS competition. The Tech Garden in downtown Syracuse will undergo a major expansion project to include the addition of two floors to the existing facility. The governor also announced the corridor had recently received approval from the FAA to fly unmanned aircraft beyond visual line of sight with in the first segment. The FAA and NASA will hold the UAS Traffic Management Pilot Program Phase 2 Industry Workshop on December 9th from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the NASA Ames Conference Center in Mountain View, California. Building on UPP Phase 1, UPP Phase 2 will showcase additional technologies, including remote identification and operations with increasing volumes and densities. 
During the workshop, the FAA and NASA will provide participants with an in-depth view of UPP Phase 2, including a walkthrough of the concept of use, architecture, technical and functional requirements, and a detailed timeline. UPP Phase 2 partners should be able to support the following capabilities. UAS operations and high-density airspace remote ID services, USS transmission of flight information to air traffic control due to an off-nominal UTM event, public safety operations, and UAS volume reservation service. And that wraps up this week's AMA Drone Report. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. To get more information on the exciting hobby drone world, just head over to modelaircraft.org. I'll see you tomorrow.